In the heart of Kayole lives a family that is reeling from the after effects of sexual violence. Wanjeri Ndero catches up with Naomi Wanjiko, a grandmother and a guardian to her three grandchildren. No infection, no one of them, a three-year-old girl, brutally molested four months ago. Wanjeri, yeah. who uses social media to create awareness of the different cases referred to her mainly through the same medium, got assistance from volunteers to move Naomi and her grandchildren from a Mabati shack to this one-roomed house. Mother smart. Mm. Eh? The house, which was also furnished by well wishes, is now a safe haven to this family destabilized by the painful ordeal that befell baby Njoki, who is still undergoing treatment and the perpetrator currently in remand. <laughs> Lakini kutoka hiyo siku naona maisha inabadilika. Juu tulitoka pale na akakuja akatulipia nyumba, akatuwekea paka deposit. Tukaingia nyumba. Bibi Njoki's story is only one of the many sexually based violence cases that are reported or go unreported every day in the country. And unlike many poor and defenseless families, Bibi Njoki's family is a recipient of Wanjeri's relentless efforts to highlight these injustices. Basically what I do when I get the, 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 the cases, I connect them to people who can be able to help. The children have been raped. I ensure that the reports, the reports have been done. And then I try and make sure the police follow through and they follow through to its logical conclusion. I get the child um, to, to the, the NGOs that... Uh, that uh, do this kind of things. But when things become really, really bad and I am left at a position where I cannot be able to do it, I go on Twitter and I say, I have this case. A journalist by profession with experience in marketing and insurance and having left all that to seek this path, Wanjeri attests that the road to attaining social justice is a marky one, both from within and without. The, the system is slow. Uh, the rape kits can take up to two years and that is evidence that's needed by the court to sentence these people. So most of them are, are, in, are in remand. But the unfortunate thing is that most people don't report. And most cases that go unreported cannot be worked on. And those, some of them also are reported but the, the people who came to report disappear because of threats. In fact, had we not pushed this particular case, they were also withdrawing because they kept getting notes under their... That's one of the reasons we had to move them. Though zealous about delivering justice to those unable to access it, this wife and mother of three has had it rough in her quest to attain it. You either do it or you don't. There's no gray area in what I do. Uh, when last year I was attacked for speaking out about uh, corruption, and at that point I asked myself, do I really want to do this? Because it's not just social justice. We have so many other things that are taking place in this country that need to be addressed. And I sat down and... I had to ask myself, I have three kids, what if something happened to me? But the support I got mainly from my family, they said, we know you, if you stop, you're just going to die inside. You go full throttle. And I became, I think, stronger and braver after that attack. The demand for social justice surpasses the resources Wanjeri and or any other lone social justice activist can meet. Every day at a time, um, it's becoming harder to do it. The organizations which are there, which are being funded to do this, can they do it better? Can they do it in an even larger scale? Can they put their feet on the ground? It's, they need to get out of the boardroom to the ground because that's where the problem is. To the public, we need to stop pretending child rape is not happening. For Women in Power, my name is Gladys Gashanja.